another um, area where some money may be coming from or may not be coming from is the aid from the state of New Hampshire. Um, this is a graph that shows uh, the last 10 years of state aid to municipalities, and these are total dollars, not just Hampton's dollars, okay, but it's total dollars. Um, and this does not include the education funding, so it does not include what school districts get from the state. This is just the municipal portion. And so as you can see in about 2009, is this the so 2009, it was about um, $150 million that was coming to municipalities. The green is what's called general funding. This was the highway block grant. And this was the um, water uh, grants from the Department of Environmental Services for water sewer projects. The big drop here was when the state was facing the recession in 2008, 2009, they started reducing the funding that was coming to municipalities. The big ones there were revenue sharing. Revenue sharing had been a program that provided $25 million. Um, it has a long history. It goes, it goes way back to when the state put in the business profits tax and started taxing businesses at the state level as opposed to businesses being uh, taxed locally um, before that period. And the idea was to share that revenue with municipalities. It had been about $25 million. It got suspended, and it has been suspended ever since. Uh, so that was a big chunk. The other big chunk of money that the state um, started uh, eliminating was the pension contribution for teachers, police, and firefighters. The state was providing 35% of that, um, that pension cost for those three categories. So obviously, the police and fire are going to hit you. Teachers are going to hit the school districts. Um, and that was gradually eliminated. Um, my estimate right now is that if the state was still paying for those, the teachers, police, and fire, that would be about $80 million a year um, is what they would be paying to local governments. So this just gives you sort of a picture, you know, how they say picture's worth a thousand words. Well, a picture's worth a thousand numbers. So here's the picture of where we are there. Um, one of the things I wanted to explain is um, where are we with the highway funding uh, in the legislature? Because there was quite a bit of um, press about that when the governor first came out with her budget and uh, when the House came out with their budget. If you recall, uh, last year there was quite a bit of activity legislatively about what's called the gas tax. It's really a road toll. It's really a user fee. It's a tax on gasoline. And the more you use, the more you pay. It's, it's a user fee, um, but it does go by the term gas tax. Um, because of the conditions of roads, conditions of bridges in the state, conditions of the I-93 <coughs> expansion between the Massachusetts border and uh, Manchester, not having enough money to finish that construction, and the fact that our highway fund just wasn't generating enough money to cover all these needs, there was uh, a recognition that something had to happen. And last year, the gas tax was increased. Now, People involved, legislators involved in this knew that they probably needed to increase it by about 12 to 15 cents a gallon. Had not been increased in 20 years. They knew they had to go up by about 12 or 15 cents, but they passed a four cent increase. Okay? Basically, this is what they said that would do last year. It was going to raise about 33 million each year. And this money, this was going to go to local block grants starting in fiscal year 16, so that's the year that starts July 1st of 15. Four million was going to go to municipalities. They were going to um, do the debt service on I-93. Um, they didn't need it right away because they had to bond it, and then they've got to start paying it back. So that's why um, it kicked in a couple of years. State bridge aid, <coughs> municipal bridges. If you have a bridge, if back here, back then, if you had a bridge that you needed to apply for state bridge aid, and state bridge aid is the state pays 80%, and you, you come up with a 20% match. Um, you had an 8 to 10 year wait. That's how long <coughs> you would have uh, for, to get any funding from the state. That's how long their wait list was. Historically, they had only appropriated $6.8 million, enough to do you know, maybe eight, nine bridges. And there were uh, th over 350 municipal bridges that are considered red-listed bridges. 
okay? That doesn't include the state red-listed bridges. These are just municipally owned red-listed bridges. The commissioner at the Department of Transportation, the former commissioner, called it the measles map, the one that has all those red-listed municipal bridges. All he called it the measles maps, and he said that was what he lost sleep over at night was those municipal red-listed bridges. So obviously something needed to be done, so part of this four cent increase was going to double the amount of bridge aid with the idea of shrinking that wait list. So it wasn't a 10 year list, it would come down to something like a four or five year list. Um, and then there was, uh, these. this is all money going to the state to do their betterment programs on state roads. I kind of call them the connecting roads, those roads that, the state roads that connect all the towns, you know, that obviously you know what the conditions of those are like. Um, so that's what that was for. So. This is what the statute says. Four cent increase, this is where it's going to go. So, that's what everybody expected. This is what was expected, at least from the municipal standpoint. This is what the highway funding had been. There was the block grant, 12% of whatever comes into the highway fund from the gas tax and from motor vehicle fees, 12% goes to municipalities. And then there had been the bridge aid, so it had been 37 million. This four cent increase, was going to give four, four million more to that highway block grant and double the bridge aid, so 6.8. So it was going to be a total of 48.4 million. When the bill passed, which municipalities supported, that's what was expected. When the governor came out with her proposal, <laughs> she said, okay, I can't cut anything, I can't cut any of this money because that's what the law said, that four cents, this is where it's going to go, so I'll just cut the underlying grant. So she cut the bridge aid. Okay? What did the House do in their budget? They said, well, we kinda, we're kind of we kind of interested in what the governor did, so we'll not only accept her cutting the bridge aid, we'll reduce the highway block grant by $4 million. So again, they will tell you, they would say, we didn't cut the funding from the, the four cent gas tax increase. You're still getting that funding, but they cut the underlying Amount. So what did that actually end up doing? There's what municipalities were getting before the gas tax went in last year. There's what they were going to get with the House budget, basically the same numbers, which was really very discouraging for us because, again, municipalities had supported that because of the need and, and because of the promise that was there. But um, where are we right now? Um, yesterday, the Senate put back the $4 million for each year. So the Senate put back the $4 million. I don't know what they're going to do with the bridge aid. Um, they recognize that that is an issue. Um, there is still the issue that the four cents wasn't really sufficient to fund the state's highway fund and all those needs. Uh, but they will be meeting tomorrow and Thursday, and we are hoping that they will uh, put that $6.8 million back so that it's just it's just unacceptable that there's a 10-year wait uh, to deal with these bridges. So that's where that one is. Um, meals and rooms tax distribution. Every municipality gets um, a share of the meals and rooms tax that comes into the state. This is one of the state's healthiest taxes in terms of its growth and how well it's doing. And you guys, are, you know, living in a tourist community, you are certainly a aware of. Um, that tourism is a big issue here, and the meals and rooms tax um, is certainly, as I said, one of the, the biggest uh, state revenue sources. Under state law, when that tax first went in in 1967, that law went in and said 60% of the money coming in will go to the state, 40% will go to municipalities. It's going to be a sharing. I can tell you that municipalities have never received anywhere close to 40% of the meals and rooms tax. And because the amount that was going to municipalities was so low, back in 1993 there was a catch-up formula that was put in because obviously the state couldn't all of a sudden give municipalities 40 percent. It would be too much of a loss to them. So what they did is they put a catch-up formula in and they said, okay, if the meals and rooms tax comes in higher one year than it did the previous year, 75 percent of that increase will go towards municipalities distribution with a cap of five million. So never more than five million. So if the money came in 10 million more, 
it would be 75% would be 7.5 million, but we're going to cap it at five. But if the money came in, let's say only a million higher, well then 75% would be 750,000. So it was 75% of the increase, but never more than five million. And the idea was to gradually increase the, the proportion going to municipalities, okay? So that catch-up formula was in for a number of years. It was doing what it was supposed to do until, again, that recession hit, and that was one of the things the state suspended, and they said, we're going to freeze it at $58.8 million uh, for a while. So that's what they did. Um, it did resume this past year. So municipalities got an extra $5 million in the check they got last December. Okay, they, and I think for Hampton, it was about $60,000 more came in from the Meals and Rooms distribution because that catch-up formula kicked in again. Okay, um, here's just a graph showing you what's the percentage. Again, here's the 40%. You could see back in 2001, it was about 17, 18%, and it was doing what it was intended to do, that catch-up formula. It was gradually increasing until, boom, they suspended it and not only did they suspend it, but they raised the rate at the same time. So the tax rate went from 8.5% to 9%. The state got a lot more money that year, and because the municipal piece had been frozen, the percentage kind of took a, a, a big dive. So right now, um, it's at about 25%. So um, the governor... Um, Oh, and if it had not been suspended, again, my estimate would have been rather than getting $63 million sharing in $63 million last December, you would have been sharing in $76 million. Um, and over this period of time when they suspended the catch-up formula, that was about $41 million that the state didn't provide to municipalities. Um, so where are we right now with that? Um, the governor suspended it for the first year in her budget. The House suspended it for both years. The Senate today um, put the catch-up formula back in for the second year of the biennium. Um, and again, as I said, what, the real kicker with this is that the Meals and Rooms tax revenue is coming in really strong. It's about $15 million over where it was last year. So municipalities could get that $5 million, and the state would still have another $10 million more than what they had planned. Um, but the state is having some challenges with their budget, so that's where that is. Um, I, I should have prefaced and say I don't really have a lot of good news for you with this, with this part of it, but um, the state aid environmental grants, these are the, the grants for water and wastewater projects under current law. Um, the state is supposed to fund those at a 20% match. In some cases, it can be up to 30% and they pay it back over the terms of the financing. So if you've taken out a bond and you're paying it back over 20 years, the intent is that the state is going to pay that 20% as you're making those debt payments going forward over 20 years. So they're not going to give you the whole 20% of the project up front. They're going to pay it to you as you're paying off your debt. Okay. Um, for a period from 2009 to 2013, they stopped approving any new grants. Um, and these projects were placed on what was called a delayed and deferred list, basically saying, you know, keep doing what you're doing and someday we'll hopefully the state will give you the money. Um, there was a moratorium was placed on any new projects that are placed on any projects that received local approval after December of 2008. So basically what they were saying was if if, you, if municipalities went to their town meeting before December 2008 to, to approve these projects and the voters understood there's going to be a 20% share of the state, we'll honor that. But if, you know, December 2008, they started getting word out that, you know, the state doesn't have a lot of money here, so you, if you proceeded with any projects after that time, you did so at your own peril. So that's sort of the, where that December 2008 comes in. Um, in terms of the governor and the House and the Senate budget, they have uh, funded all those existing obligations, so anything that had already been receiving uh, payments 
and you're still on that sort of the tail to pay it off, those are funded, but they are not looking at granting any, any new projects since that um, December 2008. Um, and again, this is just a picture's worth a thousand words, so it shows, you know, what had been the level of funding, you know, about 17 million, 16, 17 million, and then when this moratorium went in, what they have to pay was dropping down because, again, as they're paid it off, as the debt payments are made, eventually some of the projects, they get paid off. So there's less and less and less they have to pay. This little bump up was when they said, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll pay for that de delayed and deferred list, this last budget go around. Um, they, they did pay for the pro some of the projects on that list, but now we're back into this phase where they're saying we're not doing anything now. They did, um, both the House and Senate did pass a bill to set up a study committee to look at this program and determine if and how this should go forward, should there be, you know, a change in the criteria for some of these projects? Um, where, what should the funding source be? So it will be studied, and we'll see where that takes us. And finally, I did want to show you um, this. This is the um, what's happened to the local employer rates for pensions because of the fact that the state stopped making those contributions. So. You can see um, that was in about 2009. I think they started ratcheting it down. I mean, there, there clearly there are other reasons why the pension costs increase, but um, from your standpoint, one of the big reasons was the um, contribution towards police and fire. Hopefully we have the red line is the fire and the blue line is the police. Sometimes I get those backwards and <laughs> they run the, the wrong colors for those. but. Um, yeah, so, you know, pretty big increases here, and a lot of that is because the state stopped those contributions. So, in terms of, you know, what can you expect um, from state aid right now, where that stands with the Senate is, um, is the highway block grant money is coming, that is supposed to be coming. Uh, we don't know where things are with that bridge aid, and they funded the um, additional money from the meals and rooms in the second year of the biennium. So that's what's kind of coming coming back. In terms of those environmental grants, neither the House or Senate is looking at funding those. Um, and I think those are sort of the, the big issues. Revenue sharing, that $25 million in revenue sharing, it's still being suspended and nobody's talking about that coming back. 